So, let me just make sure we're properly live. We are properly live. Um, okay, so last session, uh, you guys successfully rescued uh, the crew of the Crest Skimmer and uh, had to fight quite a few people. Um, and... As a result of fighting quite a few people, you all hit level 3, of course, and have since returned to Camp Stormhaven after capturing several members. Uh, no, you guys captured one member of the pirate crew, that being the yes. wizard. The wizard. Um, who is currently... Uh, Probably, I imagine that in, when it comes to keeping her someplace, she can't cause any trouble. She is probably tied up in the hold of the Fearless itself. Um, you've returned to Camp Stormhaven, uh, slept through the night, um, and woken up the next morning. You have 2,000 gold worth of building materials, and you have a couple of pretty rough-made sledges uh, that you use to help get the building materials back. You have also rescued um, seven each of uh, various kinds of laborers, and you have also uh, rescued two blacksmiths, all of whom are now in your service. And I am turning on Do Not Disturb. There we go. And so, with uh, your camp freshly expanded... Um, and the knowledge that you are not only not alone on the island, um, but that other humans, orcs, elves, etc., other sentient creatures are not, in fact, the only threat that you have, you are faced with a decision of what to do from here. Now, one of those decisions, which we will make when uh, Mink and Jonah join us, is that uh, you need to decide how best to allocate uh, the resources you have gathered for building Stormhaven up so it is more than uh, a small cluster of tents uh, on the beach, leaving your proverbial and potentially literal asses hanging in the wind. So, that being said, what do you want to do at this moment? Keeping in mind, of course, that you are missing two members of the party. Uh, I would like to interrogate the wizard. All right. The wizard is awake. Um, nobody has gotten a large amount of information out of her. Um, um, as a matter of fact, the crew of the Fearless have been more or less leaving her be. Um, as they've been working on patching up the ship, they've been far too busy to deal with the prisoner. And besides, dealing with prisoners isn't really what they joined the Scions for. Anyway, they are members of the Navy. They are not interrogators or soldiers. Uh, Honoria has met with her once and said that she does not recognize her uh, the way she recognized Artemisia. Um, you do know that she is like Artemisia, like Honoria. She is Hellenic. She is between 18 and 22 years of age. You're not positive exactly because she hasn't told you but based on her physical appearance you believe her to be 18 and 22 years in age she is uh, olive skinned she has light hazel eyes dark brown hair that is down to just about her shoulder blades and doesn't seem particularly frightened to be in your custody. She obviously isn't happy, but she's not a quivering, fearful mess either. Um, that being said, she isn't um, this angry, wrathful person who's swearing revenge either. Uh, she's actually been fairly quiet. She eats what's brought to her. Uh, she drinks what she is given, but that's pretty much all that has happened over the last day or so. So, with that being what you know so far, proceed. Okay, I will first have a few, uh, I don't know, workmen or sailors bring like a barrel of seawater down into wherever she's being held. 
Okay. And when they leave, I uh, also I'll have like a table and two chairs set up. Okay. So that I can sit opposite her. All right. And then I will come in holding like a bowl, like a deep bowl of water with a little cloth. All right. Is anybody else with Atlas for this interrogation? Yes. I'd like to join. Okay. Uh, Then I will free her of her bindings and uh, say, please have a sit. I, pres- I, I presume you're speaking Hellenic? Yes, I'm speaking Hellenic. All right. Uh, she is going to sit down, and she's going to fold her arms across her chest, not in a an overwhelmingly rude or defensive way, just in a, a very casual, you know, leaning back, arms folded across the chest. And she is going to raise an eyebrow at you uh, in query. Um, she then says... Who are you, and what do you want? I uh, gingerly flick through the spell book that I took from her when we captured her. Okay. uh, To see if there's any sort of, like, name or any notes, any, like, journal-ish bits in here that I can read. Uh, There is just spells. There is no manner of, of journal stuff or anything like that. Uh, nor is there any features that make this seem like a particularly personalized spell book. Um, in fact, it looks very utilitarian. Um, when she sees you flicking through it, she gives a light scoff, almost of uh, amusement, and asks what you are expecting to find besides spells in a spell book. Um, I... Look up at her. Is she, like, particularly gross-looking? Is she dirty? You know, does she look like she's had access to any sort of facilities? I mean, she's she's not in horrific shape, obviously. Um, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't look like it's been months or weeks since she bathed last. She's obviously a little roughed up. Um, you know, her clothes are unkempt. She's got dried sweat on her. She's kind of dirty because of being, you know, having her ass kicked and stuff like that. But she's not like this horrible, wretched, you know, wicked witch of the West type thing. Right. Um, uh, welcome, Mink. Hey, Minky Mink. Uh, we are currently starting... You're there, right? Driving. Oh, Driving. well, uh, okay. Uh, so right now, um, Mephisto is with, uh, other people in company, uh, working, just starting on interrogating the wizard that has been captured. Um, do you want for Kali to be there as well? This seems dangerous if you're driving. And, uh, I, know, trust, like say, I trust. I trust Mink. Drive. See what you, what you don't know is is that Mink used to be a NASCAR driver. She can drive with her toes while texting oh, with yeah, her tongue. Yeah. It's very impressive. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> and so, uh, I buy that. I buy that. Hakon joined me in the interrogation, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He did. I have no idea what Ivar is doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing either. That's a good question. <laughs> so are you are you there for the interrogation, or are you, like, carving your runes or something? Uh, he's probably focusing on the runes, studying a bit. Okay, and Kali is also there for the interrogation. I can only imagine what Mink is doing, because Mink is wise, is Mink is using voice-to-text. I'm not sure the computer is allowed to hear her her voice. (laughs) Uh, Silently watching the interrogation and gives a light bump to Atlas for guidance. Okay. All right. So uh, continue with the questioning now that uh, we have established who is where. Um, So she she has just asked what you expected to find besides spells in a spell book. Yeah. um, I close the book gently 
and store it back in my satchel. Um, and I stare at her and defer to Hakon for the moment. Oh, good cop, bad cop. All right, Hakon. Mm-hmm. You are now lead in this interrogation, it seems. However, uh, as Hakon becomes the lead of this interrogation, uh, something dawns on him. And that is the fact that he does not speak Hellenic. <laughs> I do not defer to hack on. Hawken <laughs> <laughs> Hawken just kind of flexes at her before Atlas starts talking again. Yes, um, I say you can tell a lot about a person by the state of their equipment. Um. And as I'm done tucking the book away, I begin with, um, you don't know this about me, but I spent a lot of time in the military, and I saw many interrogations in that time. And I've learned over the years that torture is not terribly effective, so I'm trying a different approach. Uh... She uh, she she raises her eyebrows and says that um, knowing that torture only gets you what you want to hear, not the truth, puts you ahead of the majority of the Atenian military. Although she thinks that they might have tortured people just for fun. Uh, it's quite possible. Um, please share your name. She just keeps staring at you for the moment before asking why providing you with her name is going to do her any sort of good. Well, can't hurt. She raises an eyebrow. Well, she's raised many eyebrows. Her eyebrows continue to be raised, and she remarks that the more information you have, yes, in matter of fact, it probably can hurt. She says mm. that for the moment, you can simply call her Medea. Medea. Yep, M-E-D-E-A. I... <laughs> and you can make me a... Um, uh, yeah, she, she's lying about her name, right? Well, obviously, you can make... Yeah, I, she doesn't... I mean, she pretty much just told you that. Um, yeah. However, you can make me a religion check. Sure. All right, make me a history check. History. That's Much better. <laughs> so you sort of vaguely remember hearing something about a Medea who was a sorceress or a witch or something, you're not really sure about the details, uh, from one of the myths of a great hero, but you're not really sure what. However, when you recall your history lessons, uh, you recall that there was once a princess named Medea of Colchis who fell in love with the hero Jason and was eventually abandoned by him after she gave up everything to save him. You wonder if perhaps this name has... Uh, some sort of deeper meaning for her since she so deliberately chose it. Interesting. And also, of course, that Medea was a... Uh, Medea, rather, was uh, a witch. A powerful sorceress. Excuse me, as I write this down real quick. Uh, well, he writes this down... Hakon is not getting anything of it. He's not intending. He's not intending anything. So he's just gonna like do like a little gesture because right now he he thinks uh, the, that Atlas is like threatening her, like going like like I'm gonna torture you. So he's gonna like just like gesture like bow and like you know like like running his thumb across his neck and he's like waving his thumb uh -huh. in the air and just like pointing at her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, I say, I look her in the eyes, 
behind my bronze mask, my golden eyes shine through. Um, and I say, uh, interesting choice for a representation of yourself. As I said, people's equipment, and what is a name, really, other than equipment, can tell you a lot about them. A small uh, smirk creases her lips, and she asks you uh, what this piece of her equipment and her her smirk takes on a slightly different edge, uh, but she says, what particular piece of equipment does her name uh, tell you? What, what does that piece of equipment tell you about her? I'm sure I could launch into a history lesson, but... That's not why we're here. I stand up and I scoot my chair over to be sitting next to her. And I take another seat this time, like right within arm's distance with her. All right. And I grab the bowl of water and I lift the cloth and I gesture to like wipe the dirt off of her face. I say, may I? She uh, she doesn't seem particularly enthused with you touching her. She would prefer to do it herself. Uh, she's kind of eyeing you like she's wondering if you're about to jump her or something. Mm. Yeah, I go ahead and do it anyway, because what's she going to do? <laughs> I reach out. She's apprehensive, but I'm going to wipe the dirt from her face. Now, you did say um, you removed her bonds, correct? Yes, I did. All right, then she's going to try and uh, like shake you off. She's going to try and, and block your your approach with her forearm. She's just kind of try and brush you off there. Very well. Um, yes, this is the one Kali had manacled. The um, the wizard we captured at the beach. Yes, you will. Yeah. Um, so as she's trying to wave me off, I say, if you wish to eat, you will put your arms down. She contemplates this for a moment uh, before folding her arms rather more defensively across her chest uh, in order to protect it from any misbehavior is on your part yes uh i assure you this is totally professional so i will uh dab dirt from her face and like just occasionally dunk the thing in the water the uh, cloth in the water to continue she's a human yes uh and i will say um my name is Atlas. She is going to comment on the arrogance of naming yourself after the titan that holds up the globe. I ask her, um, what do you think my choice of equipment says about me? She's going to look you up and down, you know, as best she can, given, you know, the angles you're all sitting at and everything. Um, and she is going to say that uh, you hiding your face doesn't say anything particularly good about you. Um, either you are uh, frightened of showing your true appearance or, for that matter, uh, you are um, a coward. You remove your mask when you can to avoid notice from you know the authorities or something to that effect uh you probably have something of an ego issue because you're trying to portray yourself as this uh strong faceless powerful warrior you know as opposed to a personable human she is also going to comment that you look as though you are probably fairly uncomfortable sitting in all of that. 
if I can put understand any of them, he'll go like, damn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I, I get burned. Give Kali a, a bit of a side eye as she <laughs> announces that she's spot on. Um, and I say, interesting observation, but not quite. Uh, and then I say, we are actually in need of soldiers to join us. The Scions are always recruiting. Uh, I think you would find our employment far more desirable than that of your current position. And all you have to do is tell me where you docked your ship. She's going to laugh in your face uh, and ask her if you make a habit of trying to trust people who will stab their comrades in the back uh, at the drop of a hat. Uh, besides which, you may be a mercenary army, but she fights for an actual cause. She fights to free her homeland. Why would she possibly imagine joining people whose only loyalty is the coin they make? Ah, uh, your cause. I had heard your pirate brethren think themselves uh, freedom fighters, you know, idealists. I happen to find that very humorous. Um, in my time in the military, I came across many who sell claim themselves freedom fighters, when really they were just mercenaries of a different sort. And I continue to uh, sort of just clean dirt from her face or her arms or whatever. Um, and I asked Kali, would you ha do you have any questions? She gave us a fake name, Medea. Yeah, that was the whole Medea thing. Uh, yes. Oh, about her land. About her homeland? Um, you have no reason to believe... I mean, you can roll insight if you want to. She's going to look at you and kind of inspect you from head to toe, glancing between you and Atlas, and she is going to... She's not going to recognize you immediately as an Amazon, I was thinking about that, but I, what she is going to do is she is going to ask you who you are and why you care about her homeland.
Right now, Hakon is very confused because he was expecting people to get tortured by this point. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. Yeah. He's scratching his head. Uh, Hakon speaks more than one language, right? Oh no, he he say what it's Kansen, so he only knows Kansen. Oh, okay. Don't worry, though. When we get to Skinny, when we get to Skinny, I'll yeah, be useful. You will. You will. She kind of scoffs a little as though she doesn't believe that you're actually an Amazon before tilting her head to the side slightly and regarding you more carefully. From there, she proceeds to say that she never actually met an Amazon before. There aren't any in her homeland. And she tells you that her homeland is now part of the Atenaean archipelago, but once upon a time... It was known as, let me double check my notes, uh, why is that gone? Here we go. Uh, her homeland was, once upon a time, known as Delos. But now it's just part of Atenai. The people have had their name and the name of their homeland taken from them. They're no longer allowed to worship the gods in their own ways, and they're not allowed to speak their dialect of Hellenic. They must speak the same Hellenic of the Atenai and uh, uh, homeland. How long ago was that? Uh, before... Before her mother's generation. In the, the time of her grandmother. I mean... Is that... Let's say... Just roughly within... The last century or so. Yeah, um... Atlas is 125, so would the Theban Sacred Band have been involved in that war? The Theban Sacred Band probably would not have been involved um, in a war of conquest, no. Um, they typically don't get involved in that. Um, they fight defensive actions. And they fight um, to end rebellions, but they do not fight to expand the territory of other city-states. Right. Because since their own territory is not expanding, they, they're not going to fight and die for someone else to get um, more land, more territory. Yeah, I was just making sure I wasn't there for that. <laughs> no. I mean, not in an official capacity. Uh, it's possible that um, you might have gone there. Um, you know, depending on depending on your backstory, of course, um, how long you've wanted to be in the Scions or something like that. You could have been there uh, on your own. You could have been there uh, with your partner on like some sort of vacation or something. 
um, you were you were doing it not as members of the Theban Sacred Band, but just as mercenaries. But the the band itself was not there. No. Mm, okay. Yeah. Then I probably wouldn't have been there. Uh, yeah, Mink, the, uh, the Atenaeans conquered her homeland about, um, a hundred years ago at the time of her, her grandparents. Um, that's why they have all these restrictions on them now. No, that was, she explained all of that, yeah. She said that her homeland fell, time of her grandparents, they're not allowed to speak their own dialect anymore, they can't worship the gods the same way they used to. That is how it's spelled. Um, well, she, she, the island is Delos. The people would be Delian, D-E-L-I-A-N. Um, but she is going to tell you that um, she is going to tell you um, that all of you know, the Corsairs are not just from Delos. They're from all across the archipelago. Um, Sunday, all of their homelands will be free. I do perk up when uh, Kali says, you're true people, and I say, true people? They were conquered nearly a century ago. Surely the true people of Delos are the people in charge now, the Atenai. She gives you a very unpleasant look and promptly starts ignoring you and focuses on Kali. I do ask her, uh, you said, since your grandmother's time, was she important to the war efforts? Ooh, that's a good question. She completely ignores Atlas and continues focusing on Kali. And she says, if the Amazons were forced from their forests, would they no longer be Amazons? Would they be nothing more than another woman in another city in Hellas. A land, a land is not a people and traditions that are no longer allowed to be performed in the open are not a people. A people are a belief, a people are a history. And those things are not so easily taken away even at the point of a sword. You seem to feel very strongly about this movement for one so young, for one who 
I wonder if you've ever even been to your homeland. I'm not looking for an answer. I'm just speaking out loud. She gives him a d another dirty look and uh, looks at Kali and asks Kali what an Amazon is doing so far from her homeland. She thought that Amazons never left their forests and certainly didn't spend so much time surrounded by men. And then she kind of sneers at Atlas and she says, particularly arrogant, egotistical men. I say, um, arrogance and egotistical. That's a funny way of saying you're better. After all, it was not I who was captured on the beach. She laughs at him. It's, it's the kind of laughter that isn't, you know, nervous laughter, I know I'm doomed type laughter, but the laughter of, I know something you don't. Just to uh, throw a little bit of Hakon into the mix, out of just confusion, Hakon is gonna take one of his axes, like cleave it onto the table, like nowhere near Atlas or like, or or the wizard, just like out of, out of confusion, just like right in the middle of the table, just trying to do something. Yeah, I uh, I definitely acknowledge Hakon's effort and I give a little nod of approval. He smiles. He feels good. She gives Hawken a very strange look, kind of backs up as much as she can in her chair, even scoots it back a little bit uh, before returning her focus to Kali, uh, giving her a nod of something very much like approval um, and remarking that Kali then understands that there are things that are more important than one's own desires and one's own feelings when it comes to helping one's people that one's people are the most important part. I have no idea. Are we waiting for Kali to respond? Uh, I thought we were. Like, because obviously... Okay, there we go. I was like, I want to give her enough time to respond, but at the same time, if she's not going to, I don't want to have us sitting here awkwardly in silence. Yeah, All right. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. She's a slow speaker. Yeah, the, so that's one thing that I wish would actually, you know, for the Forge, that's something I'm actually going to say in, like, the uh, the Forge Discord is, like, have something that says thus and such person is typing so that we actually know. Um, all right, also true, you know more. For certain you have my respect. That's 
why I wish to learn more diplomatically instead of a race blade and threats. She kind of regards you thoughtfully and asks what you want to know. She seems to have taken a liking to you of some sort. Or at the very least, does, least doesn't despise you as much as she does Atlas. Then my strategy is working perfectly. <laughs> I also, at this point, would like to pause my dipping and cleaning of dirt. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yes. Uh, Hakan is going to stow back his axe from the table. She doesn't seem terribly hungry um the crew the of the fearless has fed her over the last couple of days um but you know she doesn't she doesn't look like she's starving but she doesn't exactly look um she doesn't exactly look well fed either kind of thin a little bit tired looking She's going to inspect the, the berry that you offer her kind of suspiciously. Um, you know, without her spell book, she can't use any magic to see if it's safe or not. Um, but she is, she is quite suspicious of a giant glowing blue berry. Um, but yeah, a giant glowing green berry. But um, she has probably seen the good berry spell in the past, and so she's going to eat it and hope that she's trusting for the right reason. Uh, I would like to ask, so we've been talking to her for a little bit, um, my time in the military, I saw a lot of interrogations, a lot of executions, um, and I'd like to think Atlas got a good idea of, um, you know, when he thought people would break, you know, or if they really believed it, you know, really believed whatever it is they were talking. So I would like to see if I can figure out, like, does Atlas get the feeling that she really believes this, like she's buying the sauce, or... She's just putting it up. Did you guys hear that? All right, repeat it for me. Oh, I said, um, I would like to think that during Atlas's time in the military, he was in it for a while. He saw a lot of interrogations and executions, and I'd like to think he got a, a handle on being able to tell when someone was going to talk or when they like really believed whatever it is they were preaching. I was wondering if I got a feeling if she really believes this, like she's really for the cause, or if she's just, you know. I mean, roll insight. Okay. I'll even let you roll at advantage. Uh, 
uh, at advantage. Uh, 14. <laughs> Not great, but... All right, so... She looks like she truly believes what she is saying, uh, but she hasn't said anything particularly dramatic like, you'll just have to kill me, or anything like that. Okay. I'll be back in a minute. Sounds good. All right. Uh, she's going to respond um, that if that she's always thought that they were going to reclaim their homelands, but she has heard rumors that the queen, referring to Artemisia, is considering bringing all of their people here to Eleuthia to be safe and to be free of the Atenai. Conversely, um, Artemisia is worried of the Atenai freely settling Eleuthia um, and using its resources uh, for their wars and for their conquests. She's hoping to prevent that from happening. Uh, I say... I wonder if Artemisia gets here with all of the Stormcaller Corsairs and finds that the island isn't as uninhabited as we previously thought. Would she deny the homeland of others to give her own people a homeland? She immediately clams up and says nothing more. Because if that be the case, then surely she would be just the same as the Atenai. The, the thing that I could do, like, a little, like, intelligence, intelligence check to see if, uh, like, because of all the Hellenic that's been thrown around here, like, can I pick up any, any, any of it? Do I, like, do I learn a little bit? <laughs> um. If, well. Um. Hmm. Because you don't know, you don't know exactly what is being said. So you're you're hearing and learning words, but you don't yet know what the words mean. Okay. So you're learning like pronunciations and stuff, oh. but you have no um, 
uh, comparison, no... Um, I don't suppose we say Point any. of reference to yeah, know... We ex- like, I mean, unless they're giving you a running commentary... Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, the, like they're just talk, like, they're talking about whatever, and I could like they could be saying the word food, and I just think it means dog. I yeah, I, that that makes, I don't, that makes sense. I don't suppose we rescued any uh, Hellenic instructors, did we? I mean, no. Th- uh, you can all you can all teach. I mean, it would take a while, but you can all teach people how to speak English uh, or uh, Hellenic rather. You teach a Viking their ABCs. Yeah. Right. Okay, so... um, In response to Kali, um, she gives... um, Medea gives Kali a very angry look uh, and tells her that Artemisia is their queen and is not going to betray them. And if only we understood what she'd already done and at that point she's gonna visibly bite her tongue and stop talking as if she was about to say something that she wasn't supposed to say i lean in close and i say don't stop now we're nearly at a breakthrough She's going to work her jaw in aggravation and glare at you, but not say anything further. Can I I use you with, like, a right hook? Can you what? Can I use you with, like, a a good old right hook in the face? Puncher? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I mean, you can. I won't stop you. Alright. Uh, uh, well, hold on. Uh, what, what, uh, what should I roll? Like, a, like an unarmed strike? Well, there's no reason really to roll anything. I mean, she's a prisoner, so it's not like she can fight you off or anything. Okay. Then I just give it like a, like a good punch. Just a good old right hook. Uh, she rocks back as you break her nose, and uh, she is going to give a kind of a muffled scream, and then she's going to lean to the side and spit um, some blood on the floor, uh, and going to um, her jaw works again, and she tilts her head back and starts choking. Uh... I, like, like she's choking on something. You don't know. Um, I look in her mouth. Has she, like, bitten her tongue off or something? Yeah, she's bitten off her tongue, and she is now trying to drown herself in her own blood. Oh, shit, I flip her upside down. Doesn't someone, though, have healing? Uh, e- e- <laughs> Kelly, show up buried in her mouth. <laughs> Legitimately, that would work. What? What did um? What was just said? I heard flip her upside down. But what was after that? Put a berry down her throat. Put a berry, berry down her throat. Uh, she refuses to swallow it. Yeah, I flip her upside down to stop her from choking. I, and I'm I'm gonna smack her like on the back like a baby to to like make her like uh cough. She spits up the blood and what's left of her tongue, but she's not swallowing the good berry. I'm pretty sure you can force the matter. Uh, mm, I mean, yeah, in fairness, forcing the matter is that. kind of what got you here, but... Yeah. I say that escalated. It'll get us in there and it'll get us out of there. I asked Kali, do you have any thing to repair her tongue? And I look down at the pirate that I'm holding upside down, and I say, um, that looked painful. But after all, you know how these barbarians can be, as I gesture to Hakon. Hakon thought that he just did something good. He's gonna, he's gonna, like, smile and, like, point his uh, thumbs up.
would healing word heal her tongue? I mean, it heals wounds, doesn't it? It does. Uh, it would not regrow her tongue. It would heal the wound, but it would not regrow it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can talk without a tongue. It's just a little marbled. Now, th this would be really funny when you both had mending and we just put the pieces of our back <laughs> together. She is not going to do anything to make this easier in you. Know, she's, she's going to resist any attempts to heal her if she is able to do so. I look up when she says the idiots like oh yes and what I what have I done to bring it to this <laughs> I'm currently sick stopping her from drowning in her own blood I didn't see you leaping to block his strike. She, uh, at this point, has probably passed out from the pain and is just laying there on the floor. Okay, uh, do we have any normal, like, maesters or anything that aren't magical? Uh, you have no, you have no surgeons with you, no. Um, this was, you weren't expecting to run into any trouble. Um, and you had magical healers with you, so it wasn't considered necessary. Uh, if she's unconscious now, I lay her on her side to stop her from choking on her blood. Okay. Um, and I call for a few, um, naval sailors. Uh, they, a uh, few of the crew show up. Uh, I say, one of you go get, um, go get Honoria, and, uh, the other two bind her up. Uh. Oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. No, you go ahead. Oh, Okay. Uh, at this point, uh, Hakan is, like, confused with the more people coming around, so he's gonna, like, uh, tap Atlas on the shoulder, he's gonna take, uh, one of his axes, gonna point to it, and then point to the, uh, to the, to the pirate, and then just, like, do the motion of, like, chopping. Um, I shake my head no. <laughs> he nods and puts his axe, his axe back. Um. I gesture up to the deck of the boat, like the ladder. So, like, we're done here, basically. Okay, uh, how can I get out? Okay, so with uh, all of you departing, and... Well, well, I'm not departing yet. You're not? Okay. I've, I've sig signaled for Honoria. Uh, she comes down and wants to know why you are distracting her from her duties. Uh, how long until you depart for the mainland? Uh, another week or so. The ship was badly damaged. Hmm. Uh. I need sailors to watch over her to ensure she doesn't finish the job as I gesture to the pile of blood on the floor. Um. And... Perhaps she will find Callista more persuasive. Honoria folds her arms across her chest, gives you a very unimpressed look, and uh, asks if she is going to be finishing the job, or if you mean so you can't finish the job, but she'll order two of the men to stay in the room before turning around and departing again. 
Very well. Uh, once the I am confident the sailors have it handled, then I will join the rest of the party. All right, so you guys are all outside of the ship now. Um, are you guys wanting to do any... Update my notes quickly. Uh, I run by Ivar to inform him of the developments. So she can't talk no more? Uh, she can talk. Not while she's unconscious, but... Well, she'd be off her tongue, so... Yes. Contrary to popular belief, you can say words, they just don't sound very enunciated when you speak without a tongue. Can she write? I have no idea if she can write. I didn't ask her. Mm. <clears throat> Did you really like the entire thing, or just like the cliff notes? Um, the... I gave him a pretty detailed description. If you want... With that whole mask comment she made, uh, it would be pretty funny if I made a metal mask of her. Because I, I got a new spell now, Heat Metal. I can make a new metal mask for her, put it on her, heat the metal, and that just got like a permanent mask. You guys are all psychopaths. Um, <laughs> so... Wow, I, I, I just punched, idea. I just punched <laughs> somebody, okay? I'm not a psychopath, okay? I was just going to drown her a little bit. I wasn't going to make her bite her tongue off. <laughs> I'm surrounded by psychopaths. Okay, so... That's what I brought the barrel of water down there. I, I know, you were planning on waterboarding yeah. her or drowning yeah. her a little, I know. Um, Alright, so I am going to... Um, you have to pay for the mask, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hold um, that idea for now. So, uh, all of you are outside. I'm going to say that because I need to run to the bathroom for a minute... Um, all of you RP amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes um, over, um, you know, the results of the interrogation that kind of went a little sideways. Um, and I will be right back. If I do remember correctly, Ivar agreed to teach Hakon. Um, yes, he did. Yeah. yeah the whole awesome. shenanigans that I just gave him two yeah, yeah. points. Exactly. So I say, perhaps you should start Hakon's lessons. Damn my end of the bet. Doing that practically free. And uh, I will search out Kali. And Gribik, specifically. Want to ensure he's there. I approach and I say, that did not go exactly as planned. We were very near a breakthrough. Uh, if you want them to be on the ship. Wait, who are you talking to? I'm talking to Kali. Then I, yeah, then I will approach her there. Uh, and I will say what I said. Uh, give me a second, I'll be right back. Roger. Yes, quite a shame. Atlas is, like, 5'8". Yeah, five eight. Cool. 
I didn't think she had it in her. To bite one's own tongue off. Commendable. Welcome back. I am writing notes about the developments. Okay. Uh, so what did I miss for discussion between the characters? Um, I talked to Ivar, gave him an update. I suggest he start his lessons with Hakon in Hellenic. Um, and I'm talking to Kali right now. Um, I said we were close to a breakthrough, um, and then that I didn't believe she had it in her, and I thought it was commendable that she bit her own tongue off. And then uh, that was Kali's response, I take it? Yes. Got it. Um, and then I say, uh, I have informed... Honoria that she shall be sent back to Callista to do so Callista may do with her as she sees fit jail, interrogate, execute obviously the rest of the party can object if they want to uh, and keep her around or kill her or whatever yes of course you can uh Sorry, excuse me just one more second again, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, su I say, uh, yes, really. I think she I suspect she's done talking to us, and I don't want to release her back to her pirate brethren. And Callista can be persuasive. Um, and then I would like to go examine our stockpile of supplies. I say, somehow indeed, as I go to walk away. Midnight, you there? Yeah, I'm just... I didn't know if Mink was going to be saying anything else, or... Okay. Okay, so she's just hanging out and petting. Uh, cute little... Cute little bear friend. Um, so... Um... I'm still, Jonah's still not here, so we can't go over, um... Oh, yeah. Has anybody heard from Jonah? Uh, I'm, I'm by the way, in no way here from her, nothing. Nope. How tall is Ivar and Hakon? Ivar... <sighs> I'm gonna check. Is Kali just trying to see who she's taller than? I mean, she is an orc. 
Where She's an would Amazon. I, where would I see the height? That's up for you to decide. I want to roll for it. Oh wow! All right. Interesting. What happens happens. <laughs> Unusual. Okay, I hope we get three hundred pound five four Ivar. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, what uh, what races? I think it's elf. Yeah. Folks, watch it here. The world's tiniest Viking. All right. So. All right. So roll a. Um, elf, 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 elf. Roll two d twelve. Sure. Slash R. Two d twelve. Yep. Shotgun. How tall are you? <laughs> two fours. <laughs> Below average. All right. So you are. So you are for uh so you are five foot two inches tall. <laughs> I think. Let me cause the base height base height is four feet four inches plus eight. So six inches. No that that just puts me at five foot because uh five Wait, no, four four plus eight. Yeah, so that puts you five foot even. Uh, okay, now roll a one d six. Sure. Uh oh. Slash r one d six. Two. That's a two. Uh, so two times. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> two times eight is six, or two times, yeah, two times eight is 16. Uh, so you are 101 pounds. <laughs> you are five feet tall and basically 100 pounds soaking wet. So you are uh, clearly... He has 16 strength, though. He has 16 strength. That's all muscle. Clearly, clearly, your physical might comes from divine blessings from the gods because it, it's it's he's just a his it's, it's very it's it's like very limb it's like a runner's athlete kind of thing. It's not super bulgy. It's there. What is there is, is uh, dense. His his strength is in his spirit. Honestly, yeah, it's <laughs> mostly just pure will. Sur surviving off of spite and beer, <laughs> um. All right, so I'm actually the going to add. The water he a glaive. He, he needs it for the reach. I'm yep. actually going to add to my notes that Hawken is small and skinny. Ivar, you think you mean? Uh, Ivar, Ivar yes. yes. Ivar, Ivar. No, I, I, I'm not. I'm not rolling. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> my uh, Hawken is just like you know. He's like, I say like six four. He's like six four. You know, he he's not like the biggest unit, but he's still a unit. <laughs> Atlas comes up to Kali's shoulder barely, not even. Um okay, so with your interrogation person no longer conscious and interrogatable, and uh no further knowledge on where to go next. I will say that at this moment, the party may commence exploration. You may go in any direction that you see fit. Uh, the only information you reasonably possess at this time is that the sole remaining ship is probably somewhere uh, further south along the coast um, because that's the direction both ships were going in. And that is also the direction that the um, reinforcing pirates uh, at the wreckage of the crest skimmer came from. So, uh, exploration now available. You may go in any direction you see fit. Uh, I know Joan is not here. Uh, 
he's the only one that isn't here though and if we're doing popular vote that's true you guys build you guys can also decide what to build because the majority of you are here uh so if you'd like to do that i do consider that a pretty important thing um because of course once honoria leaves whatever you build is what you've got um yeah until the um, laborers are able to gather more resources and build more i think uh or i signal for everyone to gather together and remember you have two thousand gold worth of building materials according to um right. cities uh, and wilds said, says uh i know the thursday group had a bunch of questions about the building um when we were discussing what we should build. Uh, it says building spaces 20 by 20. Uh, one building space costs 100 gold pieces. That's to like clear the area to build on top of, right? Yeah, City and Wild. Uh, let me pull it up. Hold on. Um, does everybody come when I signal for the party together yes me and all five feet of me <laughs> okay hack on mm -hmm. yeah. oh do you come when i signal for the party gather oh well, uh, well yes 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 okay so the building space um The building, so each building space is, um, um, but yeah, it's basically, it's basically clearing the land. Um, technically, according to Cities and Wilds, it would be buying land, but since you already have the land, you know, there's no one here to, to... Yeah. I'm not paying anybody for this. Right. So it would it We're would not paying taxes. It would yeah. be the the cost of clearing the land, um, and each building space space I will say, um, actually, for right now will pay for itself because you are clearing trees and stuff, which means that in clearing space to build in, you are also generating construction materials because you're chopping down trees to turn into lumber and stuff. So I will say the building space as it is right now is actually paying for itself. So you don't have to worry about the 100 GP for the building space at this time. Okay, how much would it cost to have our laborers dig a big ditch, roughly four feet deep with uh, wooden spikes in it um, um, around the camp, just to get a basic, basic defense going? What's the closest thing to that? Let me see. I think that would be the cheapest option for defense because the walls are expensive. Um, I will say a hundred gold per twenty foot long section. Okay, how big's the camp currently? Uh, well, that's something you'd have to decide, because right now it's literally just tents on a beach. So Okay. Um, can we figure out if there's any convenient, like, choke point out of the beach that we could gain as the border to our camp? As of right now, um, all you have is the water. You have... The mountains are too far away to use as a choke point as things stand. So the best thing to do would be, tactically speaking, would be to just have your backs to the water and then build a semicircle of stakes and stuff um, from the water going out in a crescent moon, you know, with a gate at the far end type thing. Yeah, okay. But there's there's no perfect. natural choke points where you are now. Okay, does everyone else find that acceptable? I'm not seeing a problem with it. Using the base as sort of a back and using a gate up out front. 
Yeah, I just mean like the first order of construction to be a ditch with spikes in it in a semicircle around the camp. I mean, yeah, a wall seems better. Yeah, but have you guys seen the cost of a wall? No, I haven't. It's outrageous. Hold on, let me see if I can get to it. I mean, maybe that's precisely why we should build it first. It's a thousand gold per 20 foot section, so you'd be able to currently build 40 feet of wooden wall. Wall. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. It's outrageous. In Cities and Wilds. Uh, down by... I could build a wooden wall for, like, in real life for, like, 50 bucks. (laughs) (laughs) Page 42 of Cities and Wilds has walls on it. Yeah. And the idea is eventually you're actually going to start um, being able to generate your own building resources. Um, like you'll be able to have the laborers and the miners and the lumber camp people set up resource generation points. Um, right now, the only thing you'd really be able to have is a basic logging camp, which would generate about... 250 gold worth of lumber a day. A question. Yes. I'm assuming people are going out there and harvesting gang supplies, that sort of thing, right? Yes, the laborers and the the lumberjacks and stuff. Because you brought the, you only, lore-wise, you only brought them back last night. So they're, the discussion we're having right now is what you're deciding what their first order of business is. Because... Uh, this is... Oh, sorry. This is kind of a general question. Uh, one of the runes I have is like of a uh, <sighs> harvest. I think it was. Yeah, Jarrah, the rune what of ha- harvest. What happens if I just give someone that so that the supplies they'll get us will double? That will not work for harvesting building supplies um, as of right now because I am not sure how I would figure that out. Um, okay. that's supposed to be on the personal level, like gathering food to offset ration loss and stuff like that. Well, my idea, like in the big term, right, in a big ass city where there's like hundreds of them, like, you know, it's a, one person can double doesn't mean much, but like we have limited people. So wouldn't it just like technically count as one person counting as two basically? Well, right. But the thing is, is like, I haven't decided how much each, for example, lumberjack would gather. I've decided... Okay like what the the so i'm doing it kind of like like um like an rts game or a city builder game the number Uh, of workers doesn't really matter it's what the building itself generates so the lumber camp is generating 250 gold of building supplies a day it's not that 12 workers are each generating you know, 24 gold a day or whatever that would would come down to math-wise. It's the building that's doing it, and it just has people working at it. Um, I eventually, what I plan on doing, actually, is kind of basing the uh, construction costs and the gathering and stuff off of Age of Empires. And so, like, an Age of Empires is something takes, like, 24 seconds to build or something. It'll take... It'll it'll take twenty four hours or something, you know. Um, I haven't decided on that yet because it's a lot of math and it's going to be time consuming. Uh, so right now I'm just going with really basic. This building creates this amount of gold per it's day. Like, period. Yeah. yeah, no worries. No I heard you. It's all good. Um, so you, as of right now, you are making two hundred and fifty gold worth of gathering supplies per day or you will be because of course like i said you just rescued these people last night they haven't done a damn thing yet um so technically your budget for this first day is 2250 gold of construction supplies because you have the 2000 uh that you start with and then the 250 that will be gathered over the course of the day okay and that's going to be gathered um because they're clearing the area for the other thing, right? Or are they just doing that by themselves? Um, it depends on what you end up doing. So there's stuff that would be getting cleared no matter what, but um, the like the majority of where you are right now is still just shoreline. There's not a lot of trees. 
So it's like the sides and a significant portion of the front arc would not be paying for itself because it's just grass and beach. Um, it's the front part where ideally like the gate would be the, the part that's directly facing the forest that would pay for itself because the trees would be getting chopped down to clear the space. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I vote as Atlas. My vote goes to uh, ditch with spikes in it around the camp in a semicircle. What, what would that do? What would that do? It's a basic yeah. defense. So basically, if any wild animals try and get in, they fall in and die. If anybody try and raids, they fall in and die. At the very least, you know, they won't be able to sneak up to you while you're asleep. They'll have to make some noise and expend some effort to reach the camp. Yeah, that oh, way they oh, can't so just walk like up to the tent. It's like a hole in the middle of the ground. Like, what, what was the point? It's yeah, no. It's like a moat, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a moat, but without water. Yeah, okay. I mean, we're I on a beach. We can put, that's <laughs> we that's can put basically water a wall. Okay. Uh, I thought you meant we were going to just go and find like a five foot circle in the middle of the fucking encampment and dig a hole of spikes no. in it. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that would probably end up killing the party because, like, one of you would be going trying to go to the bathroom in yeah, the middle of the night. Prisoner pit. And just fall <laughs> in like, it. Why? Why are we digging a fucking five foot hole? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're digging it around the camp. Um, and then we can set them to build, like, a. Well, ideally, we can find a place a little bit further inland um, to build our actual city in. Alright, so we're all doing the ditch thing. So I will say that the ditch essentially pays for itself. So you have uh, 2,000 gold left we'll say the 250 um goes into um the 250 gold that you would gather today is the 250 gold that would be required to build um the that section of the wall or the the ditch so you have 2000 gold uh to go so um what else you guys want to build you know um houses uh church i don't know um okay we should get some resource gathering going since all of the buildings are ridiculously expensive you can um upgrade the lumber camp you can have it built into a lumber mill for uh, 1,000 GP, and that'll take uh, about a week for them to build the actual lumber mill. Um, and are all of the workers focusing on one project, or are the specialists like splitting off onto their different projects? So the blacksmiths are just kind of hanging out because they don't have a smithy to work in. Uh, the laborers are basically just grunts; they just carry stuff. Uh, the Lumberjacks are the people who are chopping down the trees and turning it into usable lumber. Um, and then the miners also have nothing to do because there is you, you haven't reached the mountain yet, so there is there is no place to build a mine. So the miners are basically acting as extra laborers right now. They're helping carry shit. Okay. Um, there is a basic smithy which costs 500 gold pieces. Um, so we can make a lumber mill and a smithy, or we can order them to start on a lumber mill and a smithy. And that'll leave you 500 gold. It's or later? It's probably worth it to get us the basics. It'll pay for itself in the end. Yeah, so, okay, so Ivar's on board. Hakon? Yes. Yes, you're on board, or... Uh, I don't even know if he's understanding any of this. Like, me personally, I am on board. I am on board. How can it just, like, not in everything that you guys are saying? Right. Also, well, I'm actually doing all this. I'll begin your lessons again. Uh, uh, the, the language you, lessons? Yes, please. Teach me. I need learn to learn. Please. Alright, so sure we're going more. with a basic smithy.
Um, a lumber we, mill. Yeah. Uh, and again, hopefully we'll be able to find a place a little bit further that's not directly on the sandy beach inland later to uh, build our town. And so you have 500 gold left. Are you going to hold on to that for now? You know, let it roll over till the lumber mill gathers more supplies? Or are you going to spend it? Or Probably best to... Uh, just let it be for now. Yeah. Um, because they are already going to have their hands full building these things. Okay. They can only build so many things at a time. So, you know. Yeah. I I think we should save 500. And so upgrading to the lumber mill once that's finished in an in-game week. Um, that will be generating you 500 GP of um, building materials a day. And while the um, lumber camp is being upgraded to a lumber mill, it is not going to be generating any um, uh, building materials because it's, it's being worked on. Um, but once it is upgraded, it'll start generating that gold. Um, and that is going to be an in-game week. So, like I said, traveling to each hex is a day. So, you know, if you travel four days away and then travel four days back, that will have been eight days in-game. So, I'm not going to try and do it by, like, real-world time or anything confusing and annoying like that. Yeah. Um is everyone good for food? Do we need to take a break to eat? Or is everyone alright? I'm good. I am good too. Funny. Mink, did you have a chance to eat? You're eating right you sure, now. Yeah. Okay. All right. What are, you, um, what are you eating? Yeah, what are you eating? Tell us! Where are the others? <laughs> yes, you mute ASMR. Black rice <laughs> and beans with pork. Nice, alright. Sounds good. Mm. Okay, so, with the construction underway... Uh, and no definitive knowledge on where to go next. What do you want to do? Um, okay, so uh, Mink said we should go for... Or, uh, Kali said we should go find the other boat, and Atlas finds that he agrees with her, um, but also that we should... <laughs> yeah. Um, we I'm worried about the safety of the camp while we're gone. How many uh marine soldiers are there left? A half dozen. Half dozen? Hmm. Okay, um I call them all together. They uh they're wondering why you're talking to them, but they'll listen. As long as it doesn't uh countermand any instructions they have from Honoria. Yeah, I inform them that the party will be leaving camp uh, for at least a day, possibly likely more, and to keep a sharp eye out peeled for any sort of danger. Uh, they agree that this is something that is important. All yes. right. So and is the party? Then I dismiss them. <laughs> Is the party heading south? Does the party want to double check the areas around the camp? You know, what does the party want to do? Uh, I think if we take a few hours to look at any like potential resource points around us, that would be very worthwhile. Is there any villages that we could go for raiding? Well, you'd, what I you, know. you 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 have, would have to explore the hexes around you. You would have to pick a hex to travel to and. It still look like a, I don't want to say like a mountain peak, but like a high up area that we could mimic like a bird's eye view kind of thing. There's a mountain range, an entire mountain range, uh, to the north of Camp Stormhaven. Um, the entire northern shore, um, around the entire curve of, um, the, um, cove is a mountain range. 
How you, far away is you it? You believe the other ship is to the south because both of the civilian ships were south of you. But you don't know how far south it could be. You don't know how f how long the shore is or anything like that. You just know that it wasn't to the north of you when you were fighting the pirates. You have no idea if while fighting the pirates uh, you crossed over each other so now it's north of you. You are just assuming that it's south of you because that's where it was the last time you saw. And we also know that uh, Artemisia couldn't have been docked very far from where we rescued the initial boat party because her pirates were on foot. They didn't have any mounts or anything. You don't know that. You believe that. You yes, do know. Asked, you do know I that, that. You do know that their raiders came from the opposite direction that the civilian ships went in. They attacked you from the north and the civilian ships turned south so yes i atlas believe that okay. it couldn't have been more than a two days journey so uh yeah i think checking the resource points around the camp would be worthwhile but i leave it up to the party to vote on where we want to go first. I'm kind of full of mountains, because that will then give us new options if we see new things. I do like the idea of mountains, yes. And Mink says, making sure that you find out what is around you, um, yeah. so you know what is near the camp. Yeah, so like, these ones, pretty much. Alright, so... I'm going to say if you want to go to this hex, which is that I... the ocean? <laughs> or oh no 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 the blue part the ocean. Whoops. Shouldn't we go over here actually, then walk our way up? That's the direction I'm pointing. Wait, can you guys even? See? Yeah. So the the GM one. So do you want to go to this hex? This hex. Hey, we... This hex. <clears throat> they all have mountains. Um. These these two have mountains. So the here, the two the one northwest and directly north have mountains, you know, behind the trees and everything. The yeah, one to the west southwesty the one that's like but connected to the crest skimmer uh hex and the camp hex um doesn't appear to be particularly mountainous, no. At least not okay. from from where you're at. If we, we probably go the... like... Sorry. Uh, if we get to the top of this and look out, it surely it'll mathematically reveal the most hexes, if it does reveal any hexes. It's worth a yeah, shot. I'm fine with that. Uh, what'd you say? Midnight? I, it's, I said you can go whatever hex you want to. Yeah. I'm just hoping that we'll be able to see into the other hexes if we get to the top of the mountain, as uh, Ivar has said. Uh, so I'm happy with his, this hex. First for safety, Mink says. Well, she was saying check all the... The last thing that she typed was check all the hexes around you, um, right, around yeah. the camp to know what's going on. So if we go to this hex right here, we should be able to see the other two if it reveals other hexes. If we can see far enough, then we should be able to see both hexes around the camp. So my my vote's on that one. I'm fine yeah. with going to uh, this one right here. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so you travel the day into the mountains, and you find yourself... Um, hold on, let me... For one thing, I've got to... So I'm playing... Ikran again this session. Um, yeah, I messaged him. Or I and, messaged in general, and he didn't say anything. And that's going to be a pain in the ass, too, because he hasn't leveled up his character yet, so, like, I don't want to decide for him what spells and shit. Um, or, or how to level up his HP, so... 
Anyway, all right. Um, um, we'll just we'll just play Ikron by ear. Um, so, uh, moving northwest into the mountains, you find yourself coming across. Where's my reveal tool? Boom. Whoa. <laughs> Ruins of Miz... I can't say that word. Mizithras. Mizithras. One day northwest of Stormhaven Cove, upon the slopes of the Tigatos mountain range, the party will find the ruins of the legendary Mizithras. The buildings are shattered ruins, stone piled in broken heaps, the metal bits of armor and weapons still remaining where wood has rotted away. It is immediately obvious that this is a city that fell to siege and war, not time. But what war could there have been? Everyone knows that the gods grew angry with the sins of the mortal races and cast them out of paradise, and surely the gods would not have bothered with catapults when it came to delivering their divine wrath. Mizithras is, by tradition, the place from which the royal family of Laconia is descended, the birthplace of their nation and culture, nestled into the base of the Taigetos mountain range for which they named their sacred mountains of Laconia. Recovering relics from such a place could provide you with no small benefit, but be wary, should you not tread carefully, you may awaken something that still lives within. Uh, as we approach these big ruins, I say, um, this screams danger to the camp to me, Kali. Um, are we, we're approaching, yeah, something may look within, okay, um, how far are we away from the ruins? You, you are, you are in the ruins, there's no, oh. like, intermediate map between Stormhaven and the ruins, you just are making your way up the mountainside through the forests, and you find yourself in what's left of what clearly used to be a Hellenic city. Okay, uh, can I look at the stone walls, uh, maybe some rotted wood, and try and discern how old I think they are? Um, you may... Yes, we're level three. So anyone in the party may make history and investigation checks. Sure. I shall do both. Oh, yes, a four. And a seven. <laughs> it's improving. Seventeen and sixteen. All right. Um, Hawken, you just don't have good rolls sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> just like his teacher. And Ivar is just not having a good day either. In his defense, he's from Skanza. Why would he know anything about Hellenic ruins? That's and true, that's true. Um, he's at walls, and this is a place. <laughs> ah, yes, don't. Uh, so while all of you are looking around at first, um, Kali and Atlas both find notes, which I will read in a second. Um... And for the history checks, you realize that, um, you know, this is very clearly what once was a Hellenic city. Um, you know, the, the architecture is clearly related, though, of course, somewhat different uh, from the architecture back home. Um, you also notice that things don't seem to be as aged as would make sense. I mean, you know that no one has lived here for thousands uh, of years. Dropped out of the call. Oh, we lost Mink. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, so rewind like a two sentences, and let's see if she comes back. Yeah, I'll just wait till she. Minky, go boom. 
Hmm. Think her computer died or something? I don't know. She's still uh she's still in the game. Yeah, but uh, Jonah hasn't said anything in like a few days, right? I haven't heard from him in several days, no. I wonder if he's out of commission. Is that Mink? Hey. Hey, Mink is back. All right. Welcome back. Uh, where was I? Um, so, uh, Mink... You can clearly tell it's Atlantic City. Yes, you can clearly tell it's Atlantic City. You know, there is some some differences um but you know the the basic is is still there um you do notice it doesn't seem like as worn down as you would expect like the metal uh the wood has rotted away but a lot of the metal um is still in pretty good shape um in fact you could probably take it back to camp and melt it down and use it again if you really needed to um uh mink and um, Atlas, Atlas find uh, notes. Uh, they're clearly notes that do not tell the entire story. So everybody can roll me another investigation check. Oh, and I suppose I have to do uh, Jonah as well. Um... Ah. Uh, yeah, because of your feature. Um, I'm going to say no, because while you're not in a city, you're in the ruins of a city, but you're not at disadvantage either. Uh, 20. <laughs> so you said there's like bits of armor and weapons around. Yeah, uh, nothing they... nothing in one piece, but you could it's scrap. You could you could melt it down and reuse it, but okay. none of it is as it is usable. Just checking. I All right. like the idea of taking the scrap metal from this place. So Ikran and Atlas find another note and Kali finds the final note. So I am now going to read to you the five notes in order. Uh, the party has found multiple notes scattered throughout the ruins and little else besides. The city was virtually destroyed, and the mountainous weather has not been kind to it since. The first note. Why do the Atenai continue their foolish attempts to remain in our mountains? The Tagetus mountain range belonged to the Laconai, honored first blood of the Atreidae, chosen of the gods. Let them go back to their boats and their nets. Let them squabble with the Cretans over who rules the coast of Argolid. It means nothing to us. We have our farms, our sheltered cove, our mighty phalanxes, but we will not suffer their continued trespass forever. The second note. The Atenai are fools. They would rather chase single ships on the endless seas than force the enemy to come to them. The seas are vast, ships are small. How can they not understand how much easier it is to wait for the enemy to make landfall and then crush them in the field of battle? What chance would simple pirate raiders have if confronted by professional soldiers supported by fortified positions? None. Not to mention the fact that they would be far easier to take alive and interrogate, allowing us to find their anchorage and burn them out of their nest like the vermin that they are. Well, no longer will the Akonai suffer the humiliations of these raids. Fortresses, garrisons, patrolling hoplites with auxiliary support. Mizithras will be unscathed until our enemy reveals themselves. The third note. That one day we would be forced to join hands with the Atenai in order to survive. It is barely imaginable, but the Cretans have proved to be a grave threat. Crisa, Anea, even Mycenae itself... All have fallen beneath the endless tide of oath-breaking Cretans and the abominations with which their king has allied himself. Lady Caria now holds our oaths, the last of her family still living, and it shall not be the Laconians that, that fail this final scion of our king. 
Our fortifications, once mocked by our rivals, are now the salvation of us all. Their fleets, once thought useless, are now our primary source of food. Disaster makes strange bedfellows, and righteous fury unites the most opposing of peoples. The fourth note. All word has ceased from Olympus, even the most learned, even for the most learned of sages and knights. Surely the gods themselves could not have fallen before the Cretans and their allies. The demigods can be slain and gods imprisoned. I know that those we worship fight on. Otherwise, those of us who have been blessed with their divine might would no longer be able to wield the holy powers that set them apart from the rank and file. No, perhaps they have sealed off Olympus, are gone to break the siege in one of the other nations. Yes, that must be it. They know that we shall not flag or fail, but fight on until the very end. They have gone to save the other lands, and then they shall return at the head of a great host, and we shall drive the darkness into the sea once and for all. The copium is real with this guy. The fifth note. Lady Caria has fallen, struck down as she fought on the very door of the final gate, unwilling to let us fight and die in her place whilst she hid within the citadel. The surviving royal guard have taken her to the catacombs and sealed the doors behind them, but I do not fault them for it. We will fight to the last man and the last woman against the darkness, and we will die. Our bones will decay into dust from which all men were shaped, and our souls will go into the realm of Hades and be reborn. But her body, the body of the last of the Atreidae, shall not be worn away by wind and storm, nor raised into the service of evil. It will lie amongst the honored dead for eternity, untarnished. Only the willingly shed blood of a loyal child of Hellas could open that door now, and no such thing will ever occur again. What was that about shed blood? Only the willingly shed blood of a loyal child of Hellas could open the door now. Do you wish to try and find these catacombs, perchance? Uh, shortly. Uh, by the way, I can, um, if anybody wants to save those notes for themselves, um, I can copy-paste them out of my GM document um, for you guys. Cheated. Actually, uh, I think I typed them up as their own... Did I type them up as their own notes? I did not type them up, uh as their own notes outside of my GM document. So I'll pull my GM document um, and then I will um, I will make them notes that you guys can see. So give me a minute. Um, yeah, I have to flick my light on. I'm literally writing by flashlight right now. <laughs> Hakon thinks that this letter is just a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Okay, um, so I have them. Uh, um, how do I? Uh, okay, there was a lot in that. Um, five notes found. At and I conflict with. Look at look nigh, look nigh. All right, hold on. I'm going. I have them saved in the um the quest document. I'm just gonna type them up and um make them lore for you guys. Give me a minute. Uh, the most important thing I think he said was pirate raiders. Um uh, and impending darkness. Other than, of course, the willingly shed blood of a loyal child of Hellas. The loyal part is the... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it says, Only the willingly shed blood of a loyal child of Hellas can open the door. All right, all of you should now in the journal section, um, which is the uh, the kind of the middle section on the right side, 
um, at the top. It's the open book. You should see something called um, Lore and Descriptions now, and inside of that is Discover the Secrets of Mizithras, which is all five notes. I'm quickly going to correct that because it's Krisa, not Agostina anymore. And uh, it's the literally the last sentence of the last note. Or wait, why do I have it in my note, but it's not in this note? Uh, okay, so let me. Uh, this must be an older version. Um, let me add that right now. What do you mean, Minky Mink? Uh, it reads to me like if a loyal child of Hellas willingly sheds blood, so like cuts his hand or something, that will break the seal and then we can open the door. It sounds like that to me too. Of course, you have to find the door. Yeah, and we have to find a loyal child of Hellas. <laughs> The only thing that will open the door is the willingly shed blood. So in other words, it's it's back to the very old concept of ritual magic um, that a spell or an ability that would require um, willingly shed blood means you can't like drug somebody and cut their throat for the spell to work. It's It's the concept of sacrifice. So somebody has to willingly offer up their blood you know not necessarily their, their life but at least their blood um to break the spell once you find the door um it's it's basically like a magical lock just think of it that way i want to find this door Uh, is there any significant structure still standing? Like, how many structures are actually standing in total? There, there are no remaining structures. Um, there's what obviously used to be the citadel um, built into the base of the nearest cliff face. Um, so given that uh, Lady Caria, whoever that is, um, died helping defend the citadel during the final attack on the citadel, you can reasonably suppose that the catacombs are within or beneath the citadel somewhere um, because obviously her guard wouldn't have been able to take her to the catacombs if it had been outside of the citadel since the citadel was surrounded. Right, so I say we head over there. Okay, you all go to the Citadel, uh, and looking around, um, after some investigation for clues, the party finds 
uh, the entrance to the catacombs of Mizithras, built into a cliff face and sealed behind a door coated in magic. Well, we head there. I'm gonna need a second. Uh, got dinner. Just gonna need a, a moment to set it up. Yeah. Yeah, no. No worries. Yeah, just let me know when you're back. Uh, so what was that? I said let me know when you're back. Alright, yeah. I will answer that when he gets back, because it's part of the description of the area. Uh, the note mentions pirate raiders. I look to the remaining members, of the group that members that are here, um, and I say, you don't suppose they mean the Stormcaller Corsairs, do you? That seems unlikely. Do you suppose it could be us? As far as I'm aware, we're the first um, scions here. And this ruin looks like it's been here for a little while, at the very least. I certainly haven't taken a part in any taken a taken part in any raids against the locals yet. Uh, my conflict is not with what they believe us to be. It's what we have done. We've only fought other pirates so far. We have done no fighting or raiding of the locals. Assuming any of them are still around. Is there like any super higher place here, or like how far is the mountains from where we're currently at? Say again. Is there any higher place around here, or like how far away are the mountains, or something like that? Because we still need to get up to a higher place. You are technically the in the mountains at this point. Okay. It's a mountain range. There's no colossal. Um. You know, great towering spire. Um, it's yeah, just, you know, a mountain range. Can I, uh, uh, look around then, try to map out the area from, and see what I can see? And how about, like, my, uh, two ravens help? Um, uh, mostly you just, you just see trees. I mean, you're not, um, you're not on a peak or anything like that. You're on the, the side of the mountain inside the ruins of a city, and it's overgrown, and there's fir trees and stuff grown up. Um, it's not, it's not an unbroken view. You're not, you're not on the peak of the mountain. You're just kind of there. How long would it take to get to the peak of the mountain? Um, you're not even sure where the peak is. Um, it's, the mountains are quite tall. Um, but it's also gotten quite a bit colder, so you don't know how much higher you could really go. Um, you're... Comparatively, you're probably at four, 
four and a half thousand feet right now. Um, so for my American friends, that puts you, um, well, maybe not, maybe not four, probably th say three and a half thousand feet. So you're basically halfway up Mount Washington, um, for comparison's sake. Um, so you're still very much in a wooded area. Um, uh besides the ruins uh there's nothing growing in the ruins interestingly enough um not a single damn thing there are no vines there are no weeds um it's all just bare stone and oh yeah that would have been <laughs> yeah yeah that's important to mention crumbling Landing. ruins it's surrounded by trees and forest but there is not a single living thing that you can see inside of the city itself or what's left I... of the city Drain my ears to hear any wildlife of any kind. You can hear wildlife, but it's clearly not within the city. Okay, do we feel any sort of, like, magic in the air? Uh, you can make an arcana check. Sure. I'm back, by the way. Got the food with me. What'd you get? Um, I got corn, chicken... Uh, Bocado salad. I don't know what that is, but it sounds good. I don't. Yeah. Corn and chicken's good, so I can only assume throwing in a salad is good. Of course. Uh, nineteen and twelve. Kylie got nineteen. I got twelve. Okay. Uh, Kylie notices um, that there is a faint stench of almost like decay lying over the city um the scent of of death magic um but it's old it's very old very faded um both of you are aware almost blindingly so of an immense amount of magic radiating from um the door that you found uh which i will now describe now that everyone is back um so the door is a fairly nondescript looking door um, embedded in the side of the cliff face. Um, clearly uh, within the citadel, you know, behind what used to be no doubt prodigious defenses. Um, and it's a strange door because it's the only wood you've seen in the entire city. Uh, but you can reason that it's probably been well preserved because of the spell work that's been cast upon it. However, there seems to be some sort of uh, channel or or um, uh, what's what's a ditch perhaps um, carved into the stone beside it. And at the end of this ditch is the door, and the far end of the ditch um, is a sharp stone protrusion, almost like a spire. And below the spire, you see a carving. Uh, this carving is a small pictograph showing a woman with the symbols of the three major tribes of Hellas, which is to say uh, the Delta of Laconai, the Owl of Atenai, and uh, the Sun of Macedon floating above her head. And she appears to be Putting her hand, she appears to be putting her hand on the stone. Okay, um, so I circle around and say, This must be the willingly shed blood. Um, the iconography appears have you know Macedon, Loknai, and Atenai symbols. Do any of us have all three flavors of blood in them? Uh Hakim definitely doesn't. Uh the icon iconography uh, loyal child of Hellas, so Macedon, Lokanai, and Atenai. 
the woman in the iconography has the three symbols around her. I suppose we could all give it a shot. Um, I walk forward and place my hand on the stone. Uh, the stone pierces through your hand. Uh, blood runs down the stone and into the channel. I presume you pull your hand off. Uh, yes. Uh, your hand appears to be completely unmarred the moment it leaves the stone. Uh, the blood continues down the small channel and flows into the door before, with a shattering sound, the wards fade away and the door creaks open. I spend a moment examining my hand, um, and I say, interesting. It appears I am the chosen one, shall oh, we? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Does the party enter the catacombs? I certainly do. What treasure? Hacken follows. All right. You find yourselves coming down a set of stairs and two blue flames flicker to life. Uh, can you guys, how much can you guys see? Uh, uh literally nothing. <laughs> Maybe we have to put the tokens on the board? Yeah, hold on, let me, let me test that with something before we go doing anything, because I don't want you guys seeing the entire map. So let me test it with Ikron. Okay, good. Uh, so there's Ikron with his tortoise. And there is Hakan. And there is Mephisto. And there is Mink. And there is Ivar. And that's everybody. So. Uh, you find yourselves um, standing at the base of a set of stairs. There are two... Um, uh, damn it, what are they called? Uh, oh, chalices uh, uh, filled with blue fire set against the wall on either side of the stairs. These flickered to life the moment you began down the stairs, but there is only darkness around you besides them. Um... <laughs> The corridor of stone that you seem to be standing in is exquisite. Um, it's beautiful marble. There is a magical symbol painted in the floor at your feet. The carving of the walls is, is clearly this place was built by those who are extremely wealthy. It was built by uh, the most incredible artisans. There is, even those of you who grew up in Hellas have seen nothing like this place before. Uh, the walls are covered with murals depicting uh, battles and harvests and the great deeds of individuals. It's a very impressive place for a catacomb. Uh -huh. And to your left and right, you see a door and before you, you see a corridor that stretches into the darkness. You don't know how far. Uh, I give a quick look to the murals and such, and I say, how enchanting. And uh, what's that What's that saying when you're playing D&D? &D? Always split the party, I think it is. Um, Absolutely. Three of us go right, three of us go left. A grandiose plan. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm also going to add, the air seems unnaturally still throughout the complex, but it is neither stale nor smells of decay. In fact, it smells quite beautiful, and the party um, notices that there is no dust to be found. Uh, so... 
who is going where and doing what? Uh, well, I would like to come over to the right and is there like a knob on the door or something? It's just a pole door, right? It's just um, two stone slabs resting together like a door. Um, I turn back to the party and I say, uh, perhaps we should try and push one open and see what's inside. That can do. I should probably be behind you doing this. With my with my glaive at the ready. Well, actually, I can just send my ravens through. Oops. Oh, yeah, you can. Go ahead, send your... Does one of you, you try to open the door? Oh, yeah, I go ahead and give it a push. All right. I say it. You touch the door... And the panels swing open. You had to put no force whatsoever into this. I pretend like I did. And I say, what a monumental effort. As I turn back to see if anybody bought it. <laughs> Everyone Hacken, else, roll you... insight. <laughs> I'm kidding, you don't have to roll insight. but Hacken, so you open the door with a single push and he thinks that you're the strongest man in life right now. I nod <laughs> hack on. Squints. 13, do I have to roll deception? <laughs> <laughs> yes, roll... F fuck, yes. Roll me deception, let's do it. Okay. How's... At Squints Atlas... For a moment, <laughs> totally accepts it. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> At Atlas... Atlas is very good at deceiving people into thinking he put his back into it. Does yeah. anyone step through the door? Uh, this is my raven's through. Nothing happens. I can look through them. Do they just look around? What? They see nothing. Oh, it's just a black room. It's like complete darkness. Just complete darkness. Uh, Atlas, Atlas can probably see a little bit of stone um, from the light. I take it you relay that, right? Yeah. Uh, I did hear that, Kali, yes. Um, I say, I suspect that these doors might slam shut when I walk through, and braziers hey, might light, but... I have dark vision. What's that thing I do? Can't I, like, see it? You cannot. Okay, so even... Okay. Yeah, dark vision only works in dim light. Um, okay, I go ahead and light a torch. Uh, Is that a home rule? Because it works in... Normally, even just pure darkness. If if yeah. it was, it has nothing to do with what kind of light is present. You can see nothing. That's it. Oh, well, that is disturbing. Um. Uh, well, Atlas the has never been one to be afraid, so I step in. Two more torches <laughs> activate the moment you walk through the door, and now you can see. Excellent. Oh, I can't actually move this torch. <laughs> yeah, just delete it. I don't... Yeah, you should be able to, though. Why can't you move it? I mean, you're the one who put it down. Yeah. I don't know how to delete it, either. I can't even see it. It's not even there for me. No, it's not there for you? Can anybody else see it? Uh, the torch? Yeah. I mean, I see it, but I cannot do anything with it. I can see it yeah. now that Callie's not on it, but it doesn't exist as far as my cursor is concerned, which is weird, because I'm the DM, so... Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> uh, Kali, you would see um, the skulls on the right side of the room, yeah, the first three of them. Actually, you no, you could see all of them. You have enough uh, line of sight to see yeah. all of them. You said the this is an arcane symbol in the first corridor. Correct. I take it this is also an arcane symbol? Also correct. Is it in Hellenic? It is Can not. Can I read it? You don't, you don't recognize it. It is not a word or a rune or anything that is to your knowledge. Okay. Uh, so I shot back skulls along the walls. Are these stone skulls or... They are they are stone um, effigies. They're stone carvings. Yeah. Yeah, I say stone carvings on the wall of skulls. 
Uh, I think that's a good sign. Hey, Callie, can you move again just for a second? I want to see if maybe because I went to light. Can I control the torch? No. Okay, I thought if I went to the light rule, I could affect the torch, but nope. All right. Let's... Uh, how do I delete it? I, I don't know. Because you can't select it, right? No, I can't select it. Uh, I deleted the text message where you put it down or the chat message where you put it down. That didn't work. Um... Um, I don't know, man. I'll try and figure that out. I don't know why it's, it doesn't exist. I just, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't exist. That's weird. Back. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, the second one, the thing that looks like a protractor, it's called measurement controls. Click on that. And then you'll see a little starburst thing where the torch is. Mouse over it oh. and hit delete. Uh, mouse over it and hit. Ooh, there we go. Is that did that do it? Yes, it's gone. Excellent. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sure. I'm fine with going back the other way. Uh. To open that door. So I will, I say, Kali, would you like to? or would The you, minute you I... leave, the torches turn off. Okay. And the door shuts again. Interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Be before Kali opens that door, seeing that you're going the other way, Hakon wants to prove himself. He's going to try to open the other door. All right, I step out of the way. He's going to blow your cover. All right, so Hawken tries to open the door. Hawken touches the door, and the door opens. He's shocked. He looks at you, and I'm he's back. he he's perplexed that you, that you have lied up to him about your strength. You can't tell, but I I do my best through my mask to give like a puzzled look. Like, how can this be? You know, <laughs> pretending like the other door was much harder to open. I'm gonna roll inside on that, sir. <laughs> I'll go ahead and roll deception. I shall also roll inside. <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna beat that. Nope. <laughs> Ten. So Hawken totally buys it, but Ivar doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh... I gesture for Hawken to enter the room if he likes. I'm gonna walk in there. Two torches activate. Ooh. Ooh, I would also like to write the arcane symbols on like a sheet of paper. Uh, Ikron is already doing that because he's the whole scholar guy. Okay, got it. I mean, you can too, obviously, but that's something that I think Ikron would do, because that's his whole yeah, character. Yeah, I, I trust the scholar to do it. And of course, you see another door at the far end of the corridor. Uh, I approach. I turn back to Kali. Which way would you like to go first? Very well. Third time's the charm. The torches deactivate uh, and the door shuts. I move a little down the hall. Two torches activate. Uh, Alright, I keep going. Two torches activate center of the room you see two sarcophagi on diases on either side of a staircase 
a very large staircase, and while there are several small skulls adorning the staircase and the walls, you see four large ones. The symbol in the floor is the largest symbol you've seen yet, but like the other symbols, seems to be inactive. There is nothing happening with it. The only thing happening as you move is the torches turning on. Uh, okay. First, I would like to approach the skull on the left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for any, like, anything that I think might spill forward, like, if I touch a trap. You, you know, see like, nothing. I don't want to release gas or something into the room. You see nothing. Uh, and then I gesture for Ikrin to approach the, I say, Scala, forward with me to do um, the sarcophagus. And I would like to check for any, like inscription or anything and have him do the same also okay let's see there we are um, the party can see that the offerings flowers food drink and clothing laid out at the sarcophagi is entirely fresh completely untouched by time by dust or by insects. In fact, you seem to see no dust, insects, or other vermin of any kind whatsoever, despite being underground. As you've walked, you've noticed that your footsteps echo strangely on the marble floor, resonating slightly as if in a vast, empty chamber, rather than one full of objects that would absorb and deflect sound. Uh, perhaps it's an illusion? Ikron uh, touches the casket in an attempt to open it, but no matter what he does, he cannot budge the cover. I give it a, a shove. Nothing happens. Or is there any like pictures or inscriptions on it so I can see who this is? There is an inscription on it, uh, but you cannot read it. It's not in Hellenic? It's in Hellenic, or you think it is, but you just can't read it. It's almost okay. like the your eyes slide off the words. I'm going to take out my dagger. That Hold I on. Right Let's see what crazy thing Callie's about to do. Okay. It should be good. I'm ready. I pull out my spear and my shield. I can ready the axes. If you're going to cut yourself and smear blood on something, that's exactly what I was about to do, just for the record. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? It already worked once. Yeah. Her wrist? Oh my gosh. Nothing happens. Um, Actually, correction. The, one. the blood yeah. vanishes, but nothing else happens. Hmm. Kali, would you be able to tell if we were in an illusion? Would anybody? Ikrin, perhaps? Well, you could try, um... You could try doing an arcana check, but like Kali said, there's magic all around you, so it's... Hmm. Uh, I request... Kali, please smear some blood on this sarcophagus so that we may see what happens. No, it's just a sarcophagus. Maybe try it on the inscription?
Nothing happens. The blood vanishes. In that case, I will approach Holly and say, did you have to do it on your wrist? Perhaps there was a like a less dangerous place to cut yourself, and I would like to try and find it if she'll let me. That way you don't bleed out. I also healed magically after. Very well. Um, it looks like the rooms connect. Uh, or if I had to guess, I would say they might connect. So, given the layout. Uh, I wonder what lies between the walls. I'm going to come over here and Push the, or I signal for Hacken to come up on my left. Hacken follows. He will be my trusted right hand man from now on. Left hand man, you mean? <laughs> sure. Um, and I push open the door. And I step inside. The cairn activates. You see three more sarcophagi. What are the things in front of them? Um, offering bowls. They have food, drink, things like that in them, but nothing of particular note. Uh, no coins or anything? None that you can see. Okay. What are, the, what are these sarcophagi made out of? Stone. Stone? Oh, good work, Callie. I did not even see that door. There is a door there. Wait, could I do like an, uh, like an athletic check to see if I could like force open one of the sarcophagi? You can try. Alright, here we go. Uh, athletics. Oh, brother. Ooh. Nothing happens. I also motion that we wait for Ivar. Right. I say, Ivar, perhaps you would like to push a door? Perhaps I or could. Something of but... that nature? No, no, you are free to do so. You seem not like right. you're doing it so much. Very well. That is a big skull. Hey, as I'm walking through there, do I see anything that looks like gold, what have you? You don't see anything. There are four sarcophagi standing up this time against the walls. Two on either side of the skull, and then two on either side of the door. The, uh door on the right hand side of the room I suppose I should say there is yet another magical symbol on the floor I suspect we won't be able to make any progress in recovering these valuable artifacts until we dispel whatever magic lies over this tomb I say that we take that door on the right I concur. I push open the door and walk through it. Yes, it does. 
two more magic symbols on the ground. Maybe we should see what's behind this last door over here. Assuming it's a last door. You notice that as long as you're continuing to move forward, you're not moving closer to the door, the torches are not turning off. Uh, the torches in the grand room. Any of the torches. So you notice that the previous rooms you've traveled through, as long as you weren't moving towards the door, they have remained lit. Okay. Towards the exit, I suppose I should say. Oh, open we go and through. You find a fair-sized dais with five sarcophagi on it. And behind it, something that looks oddly like some sort of amphitheater with a number of small stools arrayed in front of it. It looks exactly like the sort of amphitheater that you would find in a small city or town back in Hellas. The sort where philosophers and other such men would present their plays or give speeches. Now I'm starting to believe that these might be mole people. <laughs> mole people? They were once human, but now mole people. Uh, the hole in the wall is not actually a hole in the wall. Um, I'm sensing combat coming up. I will be right back after another restroom. I kind of have to go to the bathroom too. So anybody who wants to go to the bathroom or grab a drink or something, do it right now. Meet back yeah. here in five. Exactly. Sure. Yep. Be back in a few minutes then.
who'll be back. Answer no one. Uh, I am back. Welcome back. You're always here, Mink. You're always here. I'm back. Welcome back. Who else are we waiting on? Just our last barbarian friend, I believe. Been there sadly. Where's Mink then sadly? I said that um, Mink said she's here, and I said Mink is always here, and she said sadly. Oh. Uh. with sigils in them. Maybe if we all stand in one of the rooms with a magic sign in them? Ah, uh, we should just explore the whole thing before we figure out how to solve the puzzle. If there is even a puzzle to solve. <laughs> I don't think Ivar is back. He's running through his giant mansion to go to the bathroom. <laughs>
I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, everybody is back. Proceed. Okay, uh, so I stand up on the amphitheater stage next to Kali. Is there, yeah, yeah. Kali checks the stage, he says. Um, it's just a regular old amphitheater stage. It's specially built to help project the sound uh, provided by the person speaking on stage, uh, just like any amphitheater in one of the big cities back in Hellas would do. Uh, it would be probably unusual for Mink, uh, who's not exactly familiar with those big cities, but it, there is nothing magical about it. It's just, it's just good construction. Um, it's shaped kind of like a half bowl to catch the sound and project it forward. Nice marble, no particular markings or anything like that. I um, approach Kali, seeing she's a little confused. I explain the purpose of the amphitheater. And I say, I remember my mother took me once to um, see a poet speak. It was a terrible show, but a show nonetheless. The point of this room, within the context of uh, a catacomb or the point of an amphitheater in general if I had to guess I would say this is where they read out eulogies and stuff uh, an amphitheater is a room in which performers or speakers will get up on stage and speak to an audience I suspect, again, this is where they would read out any sort of speech or proclamation or eulogy for the dead. Yes, let's. Uh, and we will continue to explore. If anybody else would like to take the lead into the next few rooms, they are welcome to. Wait, there's. Oh wait, oh, there is uh, another door near the bottom of this room with the amphitheater. Oh, is there? Yes, this, I think it still leads to the main. Oh, here. Room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you'd like to open it. Uh, Kali, stop. The moment you cross the, uh, or stand on the final symbol, two more torches light up. And you see, that's fucked up. All right, so my light prevention stuff got screwed up. Um, so what she would actually see is, um, is a uh, small ramp leading to a bridge and on the far side of the bridge is the largest skull yet and a small dais a uh, small dais that holds a sarcophagus that strangely enough doesn't seem to have a cover or at least that's what you think so and then light from one of the cairns uh, glances off what appears to be solid crystal so this sarcophagus is made out of stone but its cover seems to be solid crystal and it is placed between two pillars and two torches with the largest skull directly behind it. You can reasonably infer that somebody important is there. I suspect the objects of our desires lie up there, but we should perhaps scope out the rest of the tomb first. Catacombs, sorry. Okay. 
Wait, uh, is this a sarcophagus, this thing in the center? It is not. That is a large dais, uh, and what appears to be, um, well, you're not really sure what it's for, but there is a large uh, section of flooring in the middle that seems not worn down, but it it's strange. It's just a piece made from different stone. It's not a sarcophagus. It's not a hole. It's just a different bit of stone. Uh, although you do notice that this does seem to be in the middle of the entire complex, and there seems to be um, there seems to be like this is the center of the complex, even if it's not the most important part. It's the middle. Are there are like any scratches around uh, around there, or like any like edgings or signs of being worn out as if, if it's it was opened. Everything is in absolutely pristine condition. Unnaturally so. It's obviously all been preserved by magic. There is no damage to anything. Even all of the offerings that have been placed before each of the sarcophagi, like food and drink and everything, is still in pristine condition as if it had been put there yesterday. I lift... I approach Hakan and I lean down to pick up like any of the drinks that are there. They do not move. They don't move, okay. So maybe it's frozen in time and not an illusion. Mm. What happens if I, like, if I hold my spear up in the air and I drop it, it falls to the ground, right? Correct. Okay, I, lift, I pick it back up. Um, I would like to gesture for Hakan to come down to the lower right door and go through there while I go through the upper one to speed up this exploration a little bit. Lower right door. Yeah, this one down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and then I'll I'll go through this door. Um, you find two rooms that are exactly like their, the rooms on the far side. The symbols are, the magical symbols are different, but they are, besides that, entirely the same uh what did they say in that they said lower inscriptions uh, our bones will decay into dust from which all men were shaped and our souls will go to the realm of hades and be reborn but her body the body of the last of the atreidae will not be born, worn away by wind and storm nor raised into the service of evil the lie amongst the honored dead for all for eternity, untarnished. Um, okay. Yeah, so maybe it's a frozen in time sort of thing. Um, it could be. And, I'll, and also, Mank, I punch one person. One person, and I'll mark down as a troublemaker. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we just have this last room to examine, so... There's there's one less door, but I think it, I kind of already know where it kind of leads. Oh wait, no, I don't. I have. Okay. Oh no, yeah, it's like the same kind of design with a three sarcophagi, with offering bowls. Yeah. Okay. So I shout to meet back up in the main main corridor. Yeah, Ikrin's keeping track of all the different symbols as well. Speaking I ask once again, have I noticed any gold? You have noticed no treasures. Unfortunate. Uh, where's Ikrin? We've lost him. Uh, I, you know, that's a good question. Where did I leave him? Here he is. Okay, uh, I gesture for everyone to form up and approach. The moment you hit the ramp, you see uh, beneath the crystal dome that forms the top of the sarcophagus, you see a beautiful young woman lying in repose. Uh, I approach... 
the crystal sarcophagus. Um, and the spirit of a young woman, the young woman who lies within the sarcophagus, rises up out of the body and hovers above the crystalline tomb. I halt immediately, and I look at Kali standing next to me. That was unexpected. She tilts her head and looks at you before running through a half dozen languages uh, when Mink asks her if she is Lady Karya in Hellenic. Uh, she smiles brightly and gives a kind of a formal courtly bow and greets you as a child of Argolid and remarks that she is glad to know that some of her children and the children of her people have survived. Argolid, yes. Um, because remember, this whole region is Argolid, the cradle of Hellas. So Argolid is the original land from which you all came. And when you left, you uh, there were the tribes of the Laconi, the Atenai, the Macedonians. They were all tribes in the kingdom of Argolid. Um, but when you were all kicked out by the gods, you became your own nations. So she's unaware of all of that, obviously, so she just recognizes you as, as the children of Argolid. Um, I reached out to try and, like, touch her hand. Did she, like, can I, is she physical? Can I move her? You, you sound like a Terminator. Give it a, give it a... Oh, I sound like sorry. Whoops. It is not better if that's what you just asked. Is that better? Try again. Okay, I reach. I try to touch her. Uh, try disconnecting and reconnecting to Discord, and then I'll answer the question, because I understand what you're trying to ask, but you're still messed up. Okay. Talk more. Can you guys hear me? Am I sounding all right? Better. Yeah. Still a little messed up, but better. <laughs> mm. I suspect it's my mic. Hold on. If I just try twisting the cord, does it change? Uh, it just got worse again. Okay. Uh, I would twist it this way. La 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 la. Sort of better. <laughs> <laughs> Testing, 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 testing. Tolerable, yeah. Testing, testing, testing. Yeah, I'll leave it like that. I think that's the best you've got so far. Okay, I'll have to swap out my headphone for next time. Um, okay, I reach out and try and touch her. See if he's like. Uh, a your object. hand goes right through her and she frowns at you. Um, and flicks her fingers, a uh, small wave of energy pushes you back a step, and she chastises you for trying to touch a princess without the princess's permission. I bow my head. Uh, I hadn't the faintest idea I was speaking to royalty. Just type it out for me. I lost you. I like I I I didn't catch most of that. You bowed your uh, head, and that's all I got. So just type it for me. Wait, if I if I present myself to Ericaria, like what would she recognize me as? Am I am I still like a child of uh, Argolith, even though I'm a no? Skinny? Um, 
she wouldn't recognize you at first. She'd like have to look at you for a minute. Um, but she would recognize you as, um, hold on. Where is my, hold on. I got to pull up my notes real quick. Um, cause I just completely blanked on what the ancient version of your people were called. Uh, she recognizes you as an Ingling. I will type that in chat for you. Sounds like a bell. <laughs> I still sound like a robot, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's, maybe it's time to throw this away. Yes, I think it might be time to throw in the towel with those particular headsets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she forgives you for your uh, momentary lack of decorum and will ask you how long it has been. Um... I have another mic. I'm going to grab it, and I'll be right back. You don't know exactly how long um, it will have been, but it would have been um, at least uh, several thousand years. You're not sure how long. You know that Kamat is at least 5,000 years old, so presumably at least 5,000 years old. Wait, uh, does, does Lady Karya uh, speak Skansen? She does not. Um, but she recognizes your general appearance and your method of dressing, and though you don't know it, she recognizes rune magic on you and, and knows you as an Ingling. Actually, no. Uh, she would speak Skansen. She would speak Skansen. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, heck, I'm gonna like first throw, throw out like a few sentences that do, do you understand me? And, we, and when she responds, Heck is gonna like go on a, on a, on a fucking frenzy. The man's just like happy that he, that he finally finds another person that can understand him. He's going to receive a very strange look from her. And in Hellenic, she is going to ask Kali if, uh, if her companion is is all right, or if he suffered a blow to the head recently. Um, she'll remark that he's just babbling questions at her and, and, and it's, it's very strange. It's all very strange. Can you guys hear me? Sort of. Sort of, but I don't sound like a robot? Sort of that you sound less like a robot. Okay. Maybe it's not my, maybe it's my fucking computer then. Maybe your connection or internet? Uh, I don't think it's my internet. Maybe I'll just. <laughs> oh wait! Oh, oh! Oh! You know what? Since she speaks Kansen and like she she wants to figure out like uh, how long has it been, I think a good way to ask that is that if like if she remembers like seeing seeing the gods is like yeah. So I'm gonna ask like, do you remember like seeing my gods? Do you remember like seeing Thor? She says that she never encountered Thor, but she remembers well walking with the gods and serving them directly. Uh, she seems confused that this is a question. In fact, she asks um, why we have not. 
um, before uh, Mink tells her it's been 5,000 years and she seems extremely shocked by this. Um, in fact, she says it's something she finds both reassuring and distressing. On the one hand, uh, this means that the enemy of her people, the people of every other nation on Eleuthia, that they fight and died to stop has still been held at bay. On the other hand, it has been so long and you are only just returning to your home world well, or your homeland. This could mean that the enemy has not been fully destroyed. Oh, I'm gonna ask her like, uh, what exactly is, is this place besides being like cat like catacombs? Like, is there like anything else? As far as you know, it's just catacombs. But you know, then again, you are suddenly talking to somebody who's been dead for several thousand years, so you're not really sure. see me typing right okay yes oh i see i was waiting for you to finish you were like i say to the lady and then it's like oh i was supposed to look above that okay i thought you were going to be saying more afterwards i was waiting for the follow-up all right oh, yeah, yeah, um yeah. uh um she she tilts her head in confusion and says that there are no natives of eleuthia anymore at least not as far as she knows um and then she will uh, continue and say that it's not enemies of Eleuthia, it's enemies of everything. She's forgotten many things over the eons, but uh, she knows that a, a vassal of her family, a, a, a lesser king, a king that served a greater king, which was her family, uh, turned to a darker god than those of Olympus in order to get revenge on the Olympians for something that he had done or or something that they had done she she can't really remember properly uh he fed people their flesh and their blood and their souls to to, to the fire or to strengthen this this darkness some sort of darkness uh, eventually the darkness was strong enough to wage war against the world and every land in eleuthia was besieged Though the mortals fought hot alongside their gods, eventually Olympos stopped responding to their prayers, and they died fighting against the servants of the shadow that burns. She's sure that you could find out more from the other cities in Margulid, especially Mycenae. Uh, she can't quite recall where those cities are, but she knows that Mizithras fought as one with the people of another city on the other side of the mountain range. That might not be a bad place to start, Although she does ask that, unless you have any further questions, um, maybe you could consider leaving um, for the spirits of her guardians and her fallen kin gather in the central room every night to train for the day that the gods call them into battle against the darkness once more. Uh, and she answers Mink. Um, she tries to, to read the notes and she nods and she says that she remembers... She remembers dying at the gates of the citadel. Um, she, the, the last memory she has is being taken away from the battle by one of her guardswomen, but she doesn't know what happened after that. Um, she tries to give you this smile. It's, it's kind of a weak and pretty shaky smile and remarks that dying, um, 
tragically in battle is not very good for one's memories. Or I should say for the, the strength of one's memory. It makes it easy to forget things. Uh, she is dressed in uh, a very fine dress, um, and she waves her hand and pushes you back again, uh, telling you that uh, it was quite disturbing to watch you check out her corpse, and she thinks that you're a pervert who needs to be uh, kept properly under control. Uh, she kind of shakes her head. She says that all she remembers is that nobody wanted for anything, but she does have to admit that it was not easy living amongst the gods. Um, the gods did not feel and think the same way that mortals did. And while she doesn't know exactly what happened and it could never uh, forgive the crimes he committed... Um, she is sure that the gods did something that this lesser king who betrayed her people um, grew angry by. She, she can't recall what, and she is sure it's not enough to justify what he did, but she is sure that there was some manner of strife between man and God, and that's what led to whatever happened. Those are chests at the back. Trying to walk towards them will not work. She will rebuff you at every attempt. And she's beginning to grow irritated if you continue trying to obviously try and loot things from her tomb. Not, not very nice. Like, right in front of her, even... The symbols are um, part of the working. They have frozen everything within the tomb in time. Eventually, um, when the time comes for the gods to call them to battle once more, their bodies will have been preserved and their, their weapons and their armor and everything that they are would have been preserved so they could march once more. Furthermore, it's also part of a working that allows them to, to awaken temporarily, once a day, to train and to do false battle with one another to keep their skills sharp. It has a time limit, and it's dangerous for anything that is living to still be within, because it works by binding the soul to the body and then separating the soul from the body when the spell runs its course so that they return to the afterlife which is why she is anxious for you all to leave because you will die if you are still in the catacombs when the spell is activated and the spell does not get activated by her it is it is part of the catacombs it is an automatic spell uh. and to atlas she says that he she says that um, she cannot leave the tomb until the gods call her to battle. Um, perhaps if they were able to um, find more information from the other cities, perhaps even some manner of artifact, or perhaps if they were able to speak to the spirits of her parents or ancestors in Mycenae, um, she would be able to help us more. But as it is, so much of her memory is gone. Um, she doesn't know if the great enemy has awoken. She doesn't know if you serve the great enemy. All she knows is that 
it is not yet time for her to walk out of the catacombs. And I'm going to... Say again? No, I'm just saying that it's a good point that we should probably leave if, the, if this tomb is going to kill us. And I am putting on Observer for Karya, Final Scion of the Atreidae. So you should all be able to um, see Karya under characters now. Um, and so you can read her little blurb and everything. And so all of you leave um, as you cross the ramp once again. Her spirit vanishes back inside her tomb, or her sarcophagus, more accurately. And as you make your way through the catacombs, uh, the lights turn off behind you. And I'm not going to make you guys literally walk your characters back to the entrance. Well, wait. Unless uh, you got you something you're going to try. Yeah, what's up? Uh, is the symbol etched into the ground? Is it like carved or is it just painting? Um, it's carved. Like there is, it's paint, but it's more like um, like a floor mural. It's embedded. It's painted stone embedded in the ground. Okay, uh, I would like to lift my shield and try and damage the symbol by, like, slamming my shield into it. Uh, okay. Um, it doesn't work. And, uh, you hear a sound resonate throughout the tomb as the four closest sarcophagi you see spirits come out of them, spirits of Hoplites, fully armed and prepared for battle. Whoops, I see now that I actually spammed that in the chat because it wasn't going through. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um... That's not good. I wanted to see if it would break the spell so we could take their stuff. Karya's <laughs> uh, Karya's uh, voice um, seems to come from everywhere and nowhere and shakes the ground. Uh, and she sounds absolutely furious and she commands you to leave. Um, before her ancestors and her guardians tear you apart, and she warns uh, you not to return lightly without a uh, without redeeming yourselves. Yeah, I don't. I don't struggle. We we leave. <laughs> uh, we we yes, we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave. I leave. I'm gonna leave. We'll make our own temple with booze and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all leave, and I I'm really gonna that would work. reset things and take you back to the world map in a second here. My greed. You expect me just to take the word of some specter in a tomb filled with death magic? I don't even speak. I don't even speak like the, she came from my pantheon of gods and like important people, and I paid more attention to her. Uh, you manage to get out of the tomb just before the door shuts and the spell um, 
The spell closing the gate activates once more. The door is no longer accessible. And so you are back outside. You were inside for three or four hours, so it is still daylight. Uh, well, actually, no, it's probably nightfall by now. Um, so what do you want to do now? I say, well, we are come out perhaps a little wiser, but by and large, not very useful. The failing memory of some ancient specter did not guide our way. As you're standing outside through the door, um, through, not through the door, rather, but from either side of the door, two more of the spiritual hoplites appear, and they tell you the following. That in attempting to damage her catacombs, whether in an effort to steal from her or an effort to serve evil, she neither knows nor cares. If you attempt to enter the catacombs again, you will be killed immediately. However, if you should prove yourself loyal to the gods by finding the betrayer of her nation, bringing him to justice and bringing back proof of this deed, uh, this is the only way you will be accepted back into her good graces. And then they fade back into the stone. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that was better than I expected. Charlie, look at the bright side. We were not set upon by spectres, as I suspected we might have. I looked up Hakan to back me up. I nod without knowing what's going without knowing what's going on. And look the right side. She said we could atone for ourselves and what does she know? We can just come back and tell her we did it. We just supposed to expect that she knows if we've spoken to her her ancestors? <laughs> was a calculated risk. <laughs> Alright, so it being 10 o'clock almost, do you guys want to keep going or do you want to call it a night? I'm fine either way. Uh, I'm good I'd like to call going. it a night with my COVID thing happening. Yeah, you, okay. you're probably not feeling so good. So, you guys head back to Stormhaven? Uh, yeah. Or do you guys stay here overnight and move on to investigate more from here? I feel like if we stay there, we're gonna get jumped by uh, what by ghosts. Okay, yeah. so you right. you head back to Stormhaven. Yes. All right, and with that, uh, the session is over. Um, you didn't fight anybody, uh, but I will still give you all 150 exp for um we'll call it an exploration um so you should have hold on i gotta pull up a sheet here so you should have if you have 901 now you should have 1051 i, was if, at, I put at 901 just because i didn't know how much xp everyone else had um oh 1236 so if you all have 1236 um then with the 150 you all have 1386 exp 1300 what 86 oh wonderful okay uh, sorry about my rough mic yeah no worries it's all good uh you know <laughs> Shit happens. It sounds technical. Yeah, it's still it's still cutting out pretty bad. Mm, okay. All right. So as always, um, f first, any first comments that people want to make? Any immediate questions on people's minds? Uh, 
Common isn't a language, right? Correct. You you gotta teach me. You gotta teach me something to speak here. Yeah, we gotta teach him black. I know Celestial, Elvish, and Scandaz. Yeah, well, just a question at the top of my head. Uh, are, are we do we are we gonna get to meet uh, any skinny people? Um, not in this region, um, because this is where the Hellenic peoples come from. But yeah, yeah. there is a region of significant size, because of course you guys see how big the whole continent is. Um, so. If you guys are looking at the map right now, zoom all the way out. The area that I'm circling right now is just the Hellenic area. Although technically, this first section of game is probably going to include all of this. But there is a region of similar size for each of the eight nations that the players are from. So there will in the future be an entire region of this size just for the Scani. Are you going to be asking me to translate when we get to that stage? Yeah. Well, the general idea as it, as it stands now for single for for party campaigns cuz of course this is also meant to be playable by a west march if necessary. Um um, you know, to make things go faster, it can be played as a West March or what it can be done is played as a series of campaigns. And so once these characters hit level 20 and finish Argolid, when they, when you start, when you all start the next region, those player characters become NPCs that you'll run into and it will be, you know, fresh blood that are being sent out to the new regions. So it'll be a new character. Um, but your your old characters will still show up as NPCs because they're going to be the the badasses that come in and fix problems when it's necessary. You know, um, it's either that or maybe I eventually have a way to have this go epic to like level forty. Um, but I haven't decided on that yet because I'm still adjusting how much EXP you get for doing everything for this section. Because when Mink helped me test it before, it was um, milestone leveling because I was testing various fights and various NPCs. So I was literally just having them skip from story point to story point, you know, the main hits of the story, so that they could test those fights and, and stuff for me. Um, so you guys are actually playing it. You guys are helping me figure out, you know, what levels this part of the campaign will actually be played at because I haven't figured that out yet because it was Milestone the first time. But this, each section is supposed to be level 1 to 20 for a, for a new character. Because the idea is eventually um, you know, people who buy the whole, the whole kit where it's the entire campaign or whatever with all the sections um, to help cut down on metagaming like the party will actually roll and then roll on a chart and that chart is actually where the scions end up landing for the first time so it's it might not always be argolid you know for example in in the future when the campaign is finished if you guys came together i would have you roll a dice and you could end up in uh, the ancient Kamadi birthplace, and that's where the first settlement would be. You could end up in the Skane birthplace, and that's where the first settlement would be. Because then it would help cut down on metagaming, and it would also make sure that, you know, you have a chance of having a unique start every single time. I have a question that doesn't seem particularly relevant, but I still want to answer it. Go for it. What does it mean to be in this world five foot and about 100 pounds? Uh, it means you're small. I mean, yeah, you're probably like the average height is. You're. I know it's not not five. Well, the five. average the average height is based on race, so yeah. you're on the short side for your race for sure. Um, but in a world with magic, you don't have to necessarily be super buff to be able to kick ass, because 
you know, it's it's the same reason that you can see elves doing all sorts of crazy shit in fantasy, like World of Warcraft and stuff, where there's they're swinging around two handed swords, one in each hand. You know, they're using cl- they're dual wielding claymores because magic. You know, it just works. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really matter, and it's 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 a role play thing. It's not like you're going to get different rules than everybody else or anything like that because you're still a medium creature. About like, uh, uh, oh, look at that fucker. He's only like five foot. Kick his ass. I mean, that could happen. You'd have to run into another living person that wasn't a member of your group, of course. So, Uh, you know, the (laughs) the pirates might do that, but. Yeah. It depends on how lessons with uh, Hakon, you know? Look, I just need someone else who's five foot, and then we can get long like two Campbell midgets and a fat guy's rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I t- I don't I don't understand a word of what that was supposed to mean. What? <laughs> we can get along like two fat uh, two cannibalistic midgets and a fat guy's rib cage. Oh, okay. I all right. I get it the second time. I I didn't I didn't get it the first time. Did you hear me the oh. first time? I only part of it. I thought you said two Campbell midgets in a British guy's in a British guy's rib cage, and I was like, I was like "What kind of huge stuff are we talking about?" Here? What two Campbell midgets in a fat guy in a British guy's rib cage? That's why I was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand. Am I some sort of idiot? I just, I don't understand. All right, so I am going to say it's a night there as always please 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 throw things in feedback um obviously there wasn't exactly a lot of combat uh for you guys you know to give me feedback on but uh you know descriptions of the area the role play that happened um what you've learned about the storyline you know what's been revealed um because of course you just found out way more of the background lore um than your characters knew previously so let me know what you think about that um have a good night uh last session and tonight's session i'm probably going to be posting to youtube um tuesday because i don't work for the majority of this week because we're short on hours right now so i volunteered to give up some of my hours so i'd have more free time um you know so um yeah so those will be posted to the youtube uh, please give the ones on YouTube a watch. I know that you guys played it, um, obviously. Uh, next game is going to be on the... Let me pull up my calendar. Um, um, uh, next week. for so, so the 7th... No. The 24th will be our next uh, Sunday game. So the 24th. And the next Thursday game for the Thursday players is the 21st. Um, So yeah, let me know what you think of the story beats. Um, Please try and watch at least some of the stuff on YouTube. Um, A, it'll help the analytics so more people will watch them. B, um obviously like can you hear me clearly do i need to modify the audio are there parts that you think could have been cut out you know parts you think are irrelevant because i didn't i didn't chop them up too bad because i didn't want to like cut out fun role play stuff you know um but let me know if you think there are points that are completely 100 percent irrelevant um thanks for coming thanks for playing i will see you all on the 21st obviously i will still be available on discord so i will see you either on the 21st or the 27th depending on whether you also play thursday or not have a good night guys okay all right well that was a fun time um (laughs) atlas almost getting the party killed there um it was funny they made it so close to escaping um without pissing anyone off uh fortunately i did have something written up for written written up for if they piss off karya so um as uh, you heard me just say please make sure to uh tell me in comments uh pm me on youtube on twitch whatever let me know what you think um 
I am going to be posting, like I said, the last session and tonight's session to YouTube probably on Tuesday. Uh, please give those a watch. I know they're very long videos, um, but let me know if there's stuff in there that, that really could be chopped, you know, if there's stuff that doesn't need to be there. Um, because if it doesn't need to be there, it doesn't need to be there. Um, and I don't want to waste anybody's time. I don't want to prevent people from enjoying. But I don't want to waste people's time by giving them extraneous crap to worry about. So, um, have a good night. Thank you for joining me. And I have, I have figured out what I'm going to use as my closing saying. Uh, because we are lost in the echoes, the echoes of history. And... It is through history, it is through having our names being written and spoken that we become immortal. And so I will say this, I will quote Maximus Decimus Meridius, and I will say, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Have a good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.